Hello there monsters and men, ladies and people, and welcome to Recharging, and welcome to another top speed range test! And this time with the BYD Dolphin. Yeah, a Dolphin with the same drivetrain as the Atto 3. That means a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and a WLTP range of 427 kilometers. But who cares about WLTP ranges, because well, I will not be doing that, no. I will be doing... I don't know, but the top speed of the Dolphin officially is 160 km an hour. But I have already tested it and I could do 172 km an hour with this Dolphin. And I have also looked it up. With the BYD Auto 3, I could do 150 km on a single charge while driving top speed. The Dolphin is smaller than the Atto 3, so I do expect that this car can do more than those 150 kilometers while driving top speed. That also means that maybe this is the first car that I will test that can do its top speed for more than an hour. I hope so, would be exciting. Anyway, as you can see, the car is charging up and then let's hammer it. I hope you can see something because as usual I do these range tests in the evening and especially in winter it's just very dark. I mean it's now 6 in the evening which is not even that late, it's just, it's just dark, that's the way it is. And also as usual I am in Germany, I have the opportunity to drive north or to drive south, why is it beeping at me? To drive north or to drive south and now I will drive south because in the north there are roadworks and I don't want to drive slower. I just want to hammer it all the time. All right, I'm going on the Autobahn right now. There's a corner here. And then power the 204 horsepower to 160 power. It's quick enough, but it's not really quick, this car. It's comparable to a Kia Niro, for example, or other Korean cars. It's also not the most quiet car in the world. As you can hear, there is a lot of wind noise, a lot of wind noise. But the top speed should be 170 kilometers an hour. It's, uh, no, I mean, sorry, the top speed should be 160 kilometers an hour. And I'm currently driving 168, sometimes 169, 170. So yeah, it can go faster than that. Can go faster than that. Anyway, let's hammer it and then, woo! Yeah, 160 is not that quick. I mean, I'm used to some speeds right now and 160, it's not that quick. It's not that quick. First milestone, the car has used 10% state of charge and I have done 15 kilometers. So the range it seems like right now is 150 kilometers. The same as the Eto3 in, I think, autumn or spring. I can't remember, but one of the two. So. Yes, this car is more efficient than the Auto 3. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And also, even though this is a small car, it feels insanely stable on the road. I mean, the suspension of this car, it's so good. It feels like a German car. Really well done, BYD. Really well done. I fucked it up. I pressed the wrong button here. So instead of turning the defogger on for the windshield, I turned the air conditioning off. So it's now getting worse. Anyway, the defogger is on. I have to drive a bit slower now until, well, the, well, it's not fog, until the windshield has cleared and then I can go again. I'm almost ready, almost ready. Stupid me. Anyway, the car has used almost 25% state of charge and under 25%, I have done 38 kilometers. So the range is still 150 kilometers. That's really nice, that's really good. The windshield is clear, I can go now, power! Ugh, it's picking up, yeah, but not that quick. Come on, car, come on. I have the feeling I'm getting a bit less power than I did before. Maybe the power limit is slowly kicking in. Maybe, maybe. There we go, there we go. Yes, this is better, this is better. Yeah, there are a few things going on in the Dolphin at the moment. First of all, at 47%, I already got a power limit. I could do 165 kilometers an hour without any problem, but the car wasn't accelerating as fast as it did before, as when I left for the range test. The other thing at the moment is that I see a symbol in front of me that, well, tells me 
The battery is too warm, I think, or it gets too hot, so I don't know what to do. Do I have a power limit? Yes, I do have a power limit. I can still put out 100 kilowatts, though, out of the battery in terms of power, so that is plenty. But yeah, I don't know if I can see the error somewhere. Let's drive a little bit slower, because I don't know exactly what to do, if I can still hammer it or not. And let's go to the status, status of the... No, there's nothing in here that tells me something like, oh man, you should slow down, or hey, the battery is getting too hot, so... What to do, what to do. I'm now driving 130. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Is there s somehow I can read stuff? No, it's not in here. Maybe it's here. Total average, tires, average speed. No, it's nothing there. Pass, total average, tires, average speed. Theme, driving time. Acceleration timer, don't need that. Nope, there's nothing in there. Ooh, crap, I should, but I have to pay attention. Yeah, I have to pay attention. I don't know, I will figure it out. There are a few slow pokes, or there's one slow poke German in front of me. But what does happen every now and then is when I hammer it, I can still hammer it. I can still go 150, 160 kilometers an hour, no problem. But every now and then a real power limit kicks in. I think maybe when the battery reaches a certain temperature, I don't know. But that is the status at the moment. Again, I can still hammer it. If the, if the battery was really getting too hot, I was expecting the car to give me a more severe power limit than this. So yeah, I have 14 kilometers left to go at the charger. 24%, so that is easily done. And yeah, let's see what happens when I plug in. And there's a German that doesn't want to go to the right. Yeah, the power limit's getting more. It's getting more. But it can also be because the percentage goes down more. All right, that was a bit more of an adventure than I expected it to be. First of all, the battery to hot symbol appears. Okay, then I expect the car to give me a power limit, but I was already getting a power limit because I was getting lower on my state of charge so at 50 percent i had a power limit and every 10 percent it was getting more and more and when the battery to hot symbol appeared i don't have the feeling that i had a bigger power limit than i already had but i would expect that if the battery is too hot the car will give me a bigger power limit so i don't heat up the battery more so i was dumb or maybe not as smart i just kept on hammering it because well i want to do my test and I could do that, there was no restriction for that. I arrived at the charger, battery to hot symbol was still on, I plugged it in, the car seemed to charge but then stopped, tried a different plug, same thing happened again, tried a different charger, then I knew that worked because I had charged there before this evening, car seemed to charge, boom and it stopped. Okay, what do you do then? Well, I had 14% left state of charge, I was in Germany so I thought well, I will just drive to the Netherlands because, well, maybe that's a bit safer. I just drive to the Netherlands and do it very slowly with 90 kilometers per hour. Um, it is cold outside, so some chilly wind will maybe flow over the battery and it will cool down, hopefully. And when I arrive in the Netherlands, I can charge. Well, I drove for about, I think, 10 kilometers. Boom, battery to hot symbol went off. I am now at a fast charger here in the Netherlands. The car is charging, but... I came here with 11% state of charge. Uh, I plugged it in and I should get 88 kilowatts and I'm now getting 36.6 kilowatts. So yes, the battery is too hot, but I don't hear any air conditioning running or anything, or I don't hear the air conditioning compressor running or, any, or anything. I have the climate control off just in case, but the car doesn't really seem to actively cool down the battery. So that is a bit weird also. Strange things going on. I mean, there, I at least what I would expect if the battery is too hot and I plug in at, at a charger, okay, give me a charging power of five kilowatts, but turn on that air conditioning compressor and cool down the battery. That is the first thing the BMS should do, right? And then, as I have already said, at the moment, it doesn't seem to cool down the battery. So I don't understand. I don't understand. The final thing I want to say about this is that I think this is a fault with this particular BYD Dolphin. And the reason why I think that is because, again, 
I have driven the Atto 3 with the exact same drivetrain. I did a 90 test with the Atto 3, a 130 km per hour test and top speed range test and fast charge in between all in the same evening and I never had these issues. And also the Dolphin was telling me that the battery management system was working. Just for some reason the cooling never kicked in. And again, because it was working on the Atto 3 and not on the Dolphin, I think this is a fault with this particular Dolphin and not a fault of the Dolphin in general. But anyway, the top speed range test. Again, it was a bit more of an adventure than I expected it to be. Long story, but here is the result of the top speed range test. I started the test with 80% state of charge and I arrived at, well, the previous charger with 17%. So that means I've used 63%. On that 63%, I have driven 104.7 kilometers. So you can do, uh, at least what I did, on one full battery with the BYD Dolphin with a larger battery pack. In winter, 166 kilometers while driving top speed. But I have to say that a few parts I drove slower because of the battery to hot symbol and I was figuring out what was going on. So it is probably more around 150 kilometers if you drive top speed. But still, that means that in summer this car can do its top speed for more than an hour if, well, the battery doesn't get too hot. And it is summer, so yeah. What is cool to see though is that the Eto3 uh, in spring or autumn conditions, can't remember what it was, I thought spring, in spring could do while driving top speed 150 kilometers. This car has the same drivetrain, it is smaller, so there you see. If you drive a smaller car with the same drivetrain, because you have less, um, um, less drag, yeah, less wind force, less drag, what is the word? Well, that, you can go further on a single charge, it is really cool to see. So yeah, that's that, that was the result. Um, the average consumption was around 36 to 37 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But for, for some reason, the BYD, BYD decided to not have a normal trip meter. Well, I can see my average consumption over the whole run since I reset it. No, I can only see it for the past 50 kilometers or for the whole lifetime of the car. So yeah, anyway, that was the result. I am charging now with 37 kilowatts. Maybe when I get to 30%, I will just drive. Hopefully the battery cools down even more and then I can plug it in again. Or I hope the battery the battery will cool down. Why is it not cooling down? I don't get it. Anyway, that was the result. <laughs> I hope you liked it. And if you did, well, please give a like and do subscribe. And if you have something to say about all of this, well, feel free to leave a comment. And then I would like to say now, thank you a lot for watching. And as always, to be continued.